Martha Matilda Harper, a Frontier in Franchising. In 1888, Martha Matilda Harper opened up the first ever hair salon in Rochester, New York. Utilizing a recipe her former employer passed down to her while she worked as a servant, she created a hair tonic that promoted healthy hair care, and more importantly, she led the frontier in franchising by training lower class women to run their own salons using the Harper Method, which created jobs for women all over the country during the suffrage movement. I was born on September 10th, 1857, in a poor community just outside Oakville, Ontario. At the age of seven, I was forced into indentured servantry by my father and my aunt and uncle in order to earn money for the family. I had no formal schooling and my informal schooling was limited. I later went to work for Dr. Weston Leroy Harrison, who taught me about hair, scalp hygiene, the importance of brushing, and the overall science of hair care. After 12 years of my dedicated service, he gave me a hair tonic formula and the encouragement to do something with it. Now, I have heard that America was the land of opportunity, and I needed an opportunity in order to be successful. So, in 1882, I immigrated across the Great Lakes by myself at the age of 25. All I brought with me was 60 silver dollars and a hair tonic formula, high in my chief. I was able to find work for a prominent lawyer in town. His office happened to In between 14 hour days, I was able to time, find time to make batches of hair tonic in the shed behind my employer's house using ingredients such as sage and salt. Five years later, I was ready to earn a profit selling door to door. I recruited salespeople to help me. Hi there, would you like to purchase Martha Matilda Harper's hair tonic? To tell you more? Why, of course. The hair gets its only food, blood, through the mouths of the follicles. When these tiny follicles become clogged with dust, dandruff, etc., they enlarge and harden, pressing down on the blood vessels, cutting off the much needed supply. This Harper's tonic is compounded on a scientific principle to combat this. It penetrates far down, dissolving the choking accumulation. It nourishes them and draws a fresh supply of blood to the hair roots. Thus, the starved hairs begin to grow again, showing new active life and vigor. Wouldn't you like to pay just 10 cents for beautiful, healthy hair? <laughs> I was still working for the prominent lawyer in town whose office happened to be in the prestigious Harris building. I had my eyes set on it. In order to get people to notice a woman's business in 1888, I needed a popular prestigious location. It was in a time you may know as the suffrage movement when there were a lot of biases against women. My name is John Van Voorhees, and I was the sympathetic lawyer who helped Martha Matilda Harper open up the Harper hairdressing salon in the downtown Rochester Towers building. I saw a woman with huge potential struggling to find a building to rent because of inequalities against working class women. Soon though, Miss Harper's success changed many minds. Daniel Powers, the building owner, was suddenly pressing for a long-term lease. Miss Harper soon owned a present salon next door to a music studio there in the heart of downtown Rochester. Hi, my name is Martha Matilda Harper and I am the Harper Hairdressing Salon just over there. I take it you're waiting for someone to be done with the music lesson? Oh, piano is a lovely instrument. Would you enjoy waiting in my salon? I could introduce you to the Harper Method. It's all natural. It works scientifically to return blood, the hair's food, to the follicles, giving it a nourished flow. Oh yes, I use it myself. If I took my hair down, you would see that it is long and healthy enough to reach the floor. Follow me. <coughs> Louise, did you hear? Martha Matilda Harper is opening a second salon in Buffalo. Yes, New York, you pinhead. What other buffalo is there? <laughs> I heard that her salon is so popular that people from all over want it in their own towns. She came up with the brilliant idea of training another woman with her exact methods, and then they pay her to own the salon. Yes, of course, you nincompoop. It's called a franchise. <laughs> I heard that she's sending out petitions to people in Buffalo to sign, promising to be a loyal customer. I also heard the rich ladies, she's receiving huge endorsements from the rich ladies to help start up the salon. Also, she's creating more Harper products 
so more people than ever can use the Harper method. Yes, I'm talking about Martha Matilda Harper. Yes, she's a woman. I give up with you. Why do I ever try explaining anything? <laughs> and that is how I ended up pioneering the franchise. I opened my second salon in Buffalo in 1891, still 28 years before women could vote. I opened my third location in Chicago, just one year after my Buffalo location. After my Chicago location, Harper hairdressing salon expansion exploded. At its peak in the 1930s, there were over 500 franchise locations across Canada, United States, and Latin America. When choosing people to run these salons, I often chose women who were like myself, from a disadvantaged background, as some people may call it. These women became known as Harperites. Hi, my name is Miss Jenny Sloan, and I'm here to place an advertisement in the Goodwoods Weekly for Harper hairdressing salons. Yes, I am a true Harperite from right here in Salt Lake City, Utah. <laughs> I offer shampooing and various hair and scalp treatments. You see, I own a copy of the Harper Method textbook that Ms. Harper has published to instruct the Harper Method. I also have a reclining shampoo chair that Ms. Harper invented. I don't know why she didn't patent it. It's a genius invention, really. To stop the salon, I receive products from one of her two manufacturing facilities in Rochester, New York, and Ni Niagara Falls, Ontario. Maybe someday, somebody will write a book about her. She deserves to be remembered. How much do I owe you for advertisement? My name is Dane Plitt, and I am the author of Martha Matilda Harper and the American Dream, How One Woman Changed the Face of Modern Business. Thank you for inviting me to speak to you today. Writing this book was a struggle. Because of her gender, Martha Matilda Harper was written out of history and forgotten about after she passed away in 1950. It saddens me to see how few people know about this spectacular woman in our history. While suffragists talked about women's capabilities, Harper quietly turned real people into entrepreneurs. Dismissing the competitive approach of owner take all, Harper emphasized the values of cooperation and mutual support, shared her profits with other women, changed her employees' lives, and gave her girls real financial security and personal freedom. And now, since we have just a short time together, here are a few facts about Martha Matilda Harper. Calvin Coolidge, Woodrow Wilson, Helen Hayes, Jacqueline Kennedy, and Susan B. Anthony were all customers of Harper Method Shops. Martha Matilda Harper became the first woman member of the Rochester Chamber of Commerce in 1910, still nine years before a woman could vote. Martha Matilda Harper had direct influence on cosmetology entrepreneurs Madame C.J. Walker, Helena Rubinstein, Elizabeth Arden, and Anita Roddick. At its peak in the 1930s, there were over 500 franchise locations across Canada, United States, and Latin America, and there were still over 350 left when she passed away in 1950. The last Harper Methodist shop was still in operation in 2010. I hope this piques your interest on a little known but important figure in American history. That is my story on how I went from serving tree rags to franchise riches breaking barriers by becoming a woman entrepreneur in a time when that was unheard of, expanding my business nationally and even internationally. I'm proud to have made a difference in the lives of women who came after me. Thank you.